Looks like there's a few coming in yet. This, but surprise, surprise this morning, huh? <laughs> but it is getting that way, so. Psalms 107.1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Take your master course and turn to 24. 24 in your master chords. If you would like to stand, please do. If you don't, suit yourself. Number 84. <clears throat> 84.
I too want to welcome each of you to our service this morning. A special welcome to visitors. I trust that you would feel at home. Uh, I know I mentioned out at front that today our focus is on Thanksgiving and giving praise and thanks to God for the many blessings that he's given to us. And we'll just start Christmas next week. So <laughs> sometimes we get them all together. But uh, For a devotional... I'm going to lead you in a responsive reading, page 658 in your Mennonite hymnal. So if you'd each get that, uh, number 658 in your Mennonite hymnal. I'm just thankful that, that we live in a country that Thanksgiving's a national holiday. I think we can be thankful for that. Uh, yeah, it's... Okay, I'll read the, the first, the light print, and then I ask you to, to read the dark. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of his salvation from day to day. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and he is to be held in awe above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and joy are in his place. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice, and let them say among the nations, The Lord reigns. Then shall the trees of the woods sing for the joy before the Lord. For he comes to judge the earth. Let's pray. We pause to give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love endures forever. I just thank you for your love and your the blessings of, of knowing you. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for the, the plan of salvation that you've brought to us through Jesus. I just thank you for so many blessings of, of knowing you and being blessed by you in our spiritual lives, in our physical beings, or in our uh, material blessings that we enjoy and experience each day. We just, we thank you and we, we honor you and we're here to praise and worship you today. I just pray that we would all count our blessings and see them that they've, they've come from your hand, uh, from your great love. I just pray, pray a blessing on the service this morning. I pray that your spirit and, and love would anoint us and be here with us. Uh, that all that's said and done would bring honor and glory to you. A special blessing on Bob as he brings the message to us and opens your word, that we would be challenged and, and uh, 
yeah, comforted and just be encouraged by, uh, by your word. Again, thank you for each person in this building. Thank you for their commitment to you and their willingness to be here. I pray that uh, your spirit would speak to them and they would open their hearts. I just pray that all is said and done would bring honor and glory to you. In your name, amen. Okay, we'll continue to worship and singing. Turn again to 151 in your master course, 151, and yeah, Tim was talking about Thanksgiving, and you know, somebody said every day ought to be Thanksgiving, and that's true, now maybe everything isn't you're thankful for, but you can have a thankful spirit. Okay, stand and sing with us. <clears throat>
viewer. And I wish you God's blessings here this morning. It's been a while since I've been here, um, it seems. And I even forgot to, uh, to turn on the mic. Um, it's good to see you. Hey, and it's good to see each of you here this morning, and I trust that as we gather together that we will indeed be able to, um, to sense what God is, is saying uh, to us uh, here this, uh, this morning. Um, the last song that we sang, Be Still and Know That, that I Am God. I invite you to, um, to listen and to watch this, um, uh, uh, this uh, video. Today I lift my eyes to the heavens and count my blessings. I think of all my needs that were met today. The clothes on my back. A place to lie down tonight. Nothing miraculous or earth-shattering. Just the small things that help keep me going day after day. Thank you, God. I have food on my table, help to get me through the day. Good memories I've shared. All the beauty that makes life special. Thank you, God. I'm blessed by what I can see and touch. What I can feel in the moment. But Lord, you transcend feelings and moments. You sacrificed your life so I could see beyond what's under my feet and over my head. <sighs> Thank you, God. That kind of love keeps my heart free. During seasons where peace is hard to come by, even when I can't see or touch a blessing, I know I can close my eyes and say, thank you, God. I, I've lost a lot this year. Things I worked hard for. Dreams I was sure were gonna come true. People I never wanted to say goodbye to. I walked a hard path of trial and pain and despair. But I never walked it alone. Even now, I can say thank you, God. Because no matter what is set before me, dark valleys or green pastures, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And when this life is over, I'll dwell with you in your house forever. So I just want to stop and tell you. Thank you, God. 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 What I sense as I've been waiting on God here for this worship service for this time is that each of us would join these men and women, and we also, our hearts would be stirred here to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so as we look at God's word here this morning, it is my, my prayer, it's been my prayer, that we would be able to sense within our heart swelling up those words, God, we thank you. That as we remember all of who God is, that our hearts will say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. This is a Thanksgiving celebration worship service. And at the beginning of this Thanksgiving week, this is a time to say simply but profoundly, thank you, God. Thank you, God. This morning, the table has been set. Special thanks to the decorating committee. It's a beautiful table. It's a wonderful table. And I invite you to re see this table as a reminder and has the reason why we say thank you, God, and why we are able to say thank you. And this next video is going to help unpack that.
The table is where life happens. It's where imagination runs wild. Where lessons are learned. And wonders are built. The table is where time can stop. Where wounds are comforted. And freedom begins. It's where we find peace. And we laugh till it hurts. The table is where we gather with family, new and old, to share stories, to nourish our bodies, to enrich our souls. The table is where we give thanks and where we remember what great gifts The reason why this table is a thanksgiving table is because of what Jesus has done. And so as we gather at our tables here this Thursday or perhaps uh, another day with family, with friends, as we share memories, as we tell stories, as we laugh, as we perhaps shed a few tears, May we remember that Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done for us is the reason why we are able to say, thank you, God. That in, in the midst of all of life's journeys, that we are able to say, thank you, God, because of what Jesus has done. And so this morning, we're going to be joining Jesus at a table. Luke uh, 14 is the passage. And in Luke 14, this is uh, a different passage to, to look at as we think about um, Thanksgiving and Jesus' death and what he has provided for us. But what I would like us to do is we're, um, I'd like us to look at the, these verses and we're going to be dividing Luke 14 into three sections. Luke 14 can be divided into these sections, verses 1 through 6, verses 7 through 14, verses 15 through 24. Those are like three sections. And what I'm, as I was sitting with this, this passage, what I started seeing in a new way that, that out of these verses, we can find reason why we can say, why our hearts are stirred to say, thank you, God. And so what I'd like to do, and this message is going to be, be, be slightly different, is I'd, we're, we're going to be reading the passage of Scripture, first of all, the section 1 through 6, and, the, and then after that, I'll make a few comments. And then we're going to actually enter into a time of saying, thank you, God, based upon that which God has said to us in those verses that we had just read. And so, verses 1 through 6, as we read that, those verses, I invite you to ask the question, so God, what is stirring within my heart that is causing my heart to say, thank you, God? You know, this is sort of like a conversational prayer. And prayer is conversation, right? We know that. That is, the prayer is a time when we listen to God and we hear what God is saying to us. And what better way to hear God than to read God's Word? And that's what I'm, I'm suggesting that we will do, that we will hear God speak to us in, ver in these verses. And then I'll give a few comments. And then 
we will actually sit at the table and give thanks to God. We'll give thanks to God based upon what we have heard. And, and we'll lead you uh, through that, uh, that time. Luke 14. Luke 14, 1 through 7. 1 through 6. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched, and there in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. And Jesus asked the Pharisees and the experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. And then he asked them, if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. This is the beginning of a narrative. Jesus is not teaching about thanksgiving. He's not teaching about prayer. He's not, we don't even see a prayer, a mealtime prayer being given to us uh, by Jesus. But here we find Jesus sitting at the table of a prominent Pharisee on a Sabbath day, and a man comes with a disease, appears before him, in need of healing. And so Jesus goes ahead and he proceeds to heal the man on the Sabbath. Now, standard law at that point said that healing, unless it's life-threatening healing, should wait until the day after the Sabbath. And so perhaps they were trying to trick Jesus or whatever. But then Jesus, they, they said nothing to Jesus' question. And then Jesus gives a word analogy of a possible situation of rescuing a child or perhaps another uh, animal is, is, is given there uh, that has fallen into the well. And so in that setting and in these verses, as I've been sitting with those verses, my heart has been stirred this past week to give thanks, first of all, that God... Sorry about that. Again, I've been out of this long enough. That God is saying to us, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for, he- for your healing presence. Thank you, God, for that healing that we can sense emotionally, physically, spiritually. And thank you, God, for rescuing all who have fallen in the wells. You know, my heart has been stirred as I think about how God's grace, God's grace-filled hand, reached down into the well of sin that I was trapped in, that I fell in, and God's hand reached down there, and I held and hold up, and grasped God's hand, and God's mighty grace, love-felt hand pulled me up out of the well, and He does that for each one of us. God, thank you. And how God also is able to to, to allow us to experience God's healing presence emotionally, physically, and spiritually. God. thank you that you are a rescuing God. We thank you that you have rescued us out of our sinful lives. God, thank you. Thank you that you have provided a way of escape, that you've made it possible for us to 
to be freed from, from that sin that holds us bondage. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that you are a healing God. Thank you, God. the psalmist in Psalm 103 and say, praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name, praise the Lord my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sin, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Thank you, God. And God, thank you that we can personalize David's words and say, who forgets all my sins, who heals my diseases, who redeems my life from the pit and crowns us with love and compassion, who satisfies our desires with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Thank you, God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. And thank you for your healing. We give you thanks, oh God. Amen. Verse 7, when he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. And then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. And then you will be honored in the presence of all of the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your na rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The meaning behind these words of Jesus is not where people should sit around the table. The meaning of these words of Jesus is not even directly who should be on the invitation list, who should be invited. The deeper meaning of these words of Jesus is that God's kingdom is a kingdom for all people. A kingdom that is for all people. And as I've been sitting with these, these verses, the deeper meaning is, that, God is open, that, that the kingdom of God is open to those who with a heart of humility 
are aware of their brokenness. The deeper meaning is that God has a special heart a special heart for those and even a special place prepared for those who are aware of their brokenness and their deep, deep need for God and for God's love and of God's grace, of God's restorative healing. God invites all people and God accepts us as we are. And as I've been sitting with these verses, God's words have caused my heart to say, God, I thank you. I thank you for honoring the brokenhearted and extending an invitation to all people. The table has been set, and so let us come to the table and give thanks. God, we do thank you. We thank you that you accept us for who we are. As we are, I should say. God, thank you that we don't have to be dressed up. We don't have to pretend that we can come here even on Sunday mornings with our pain, with our joys, with our dreams, with our disappointments, and that you love us, you accept us, and that you have a place prepared for us. that this is open and that you've extended an invitation to all people and that you see each person has valuable and honorable because you have created each person in your image each person you have created each of us you've created in your image And God, thank you that you have extended an invitation to all people, all nationalities, all languages, all people groups, that you've not excluded anyone from this invitation list, that you sent an invitation to everyone who has lived and who is living. And thank you for this this picture that we see in Revelation, Revelation 7, of this great multitude that after this I looked and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from, from every nation, from every tribe, every people, every language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and they were holding palm branches in their hands. And they were crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God. Thank you, God. to listen to what God has to say to us. Verse 15. This is the first time that we hear someone from the table other than Jesus speaking. Up to this point, they were silent. And in verse 15, we have this. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. This person was probably referring to a verse that uh, Isaiah, 
He may have been thinking about a verse that Isaiah wrote. Uh, the, uh, the verse in Isaiah would have been Isaiah 25, verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meals, and the finest of wines. And so in response, Jesus tells yet another parable, another parable about another table. And I invite you to listen to Jesus' words. A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. And at that time, the banquet he sent his, uh, or at the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I've just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please, excuse me. And still another said, hey, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full and I tell you not one of those who were invited will taste of my banquet. Jesus seems to be referring to what John in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9, has described and has talked about. And in John, or in Revelation 9, we see a description of the wedding feast, the wedding supper of the Lamb. And these words of Jesus, as I think about this wedding feast, as I think about the upcoming uh, supper of the Lamb, these words of Jesus stir my heart to say, God, I thank you for the promise of the banquet table in heaven, a banquet table that is open to all who accept Jesus' invitation to come. And as I was thinking about this, I started to see in a new way at this banquet table this marriage, this supper of the Lamb, that for all those who accept Jesus' invitation, that they're at a plate, at a setting, there is a person's name. And as I was thinking about that, I was, my heart stirred with, and this week as I was thinking about that in our kitchen, I just started, started crying and sobbing. Sobbing and crying because of the tears of joy and also the, the understanding that it's not what we do that has the name on the plate, but it's what Jesus has done for each of us. And so let us pray and give thanks. God, we thank you. We thank you for the hope and for the promise of a table. The, the promise and the table that you have prepared. 
in the hope that we can get that, that anticipation that we can have. God, it's, it's a wonderful to know that it's because of your sacrificial death on the cross that there's a setting at this marriage supper of the Lamb with our name on. And we thank you. We thank you that we can look with anticipation to sit at this table. That there is a time coming for each one of us who will be joining you at this table that you are sitting at. It's a glorious banquet table. Thank you for the description of this table that is in Revelation 19. And then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and this, like the sound of mighty peals of thunder crying out, Hallelujah. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. God, we humbly kneel. This week, as we gather at our Thanksgiving table, may we remember all of that which Jesus has done for us. And I had this crazy idea of what would it be like if at our Thanksgiving tables we would have a special setting perhaps in the center. And we would put a cross on that plate, on that setting, and that would be a place for where Jesus would be sitting. And we would be giving thanks to God and thanks for Jesus. May we, as we enter into our Thanksgiving week, May our hearts draw near to God's heart as we give thanks to God. 
And may our Thanksgiving tables this week truly be a table of offering thanks. Thanks to God, thanks to Jesus. Thanks for who he is and for what he has done. The table has been set and we're all welcome to come to it. Amen and amen. I invite you to take your Mennonite hymnals and turn to number 527. <clears throat> number 527, Mennonite hymnal. I invite you to stand, those who can, for the closing for, for the song here. <clears throat> Son of thy love for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us. Thank you. you. May be seated. And the children, they were going to the basement ages four through grade four may be dismissed at this time. All right, as you see in your bulletin, this morning we'll be receiving the Thanksgiving offering and also, as you see up front, the names of the people who will um, be receiving parts of the offering are up there. So um, I'd like to ask you to, to be in prayer for, for these people who are going to be receiving um, as well as giving. Um, so if the ushers are ready, come forward. 
as they're coming forward, if you weren't prepared this morning to give um, the next two Sundays, uh, you're welcome to give just your mark, your check for the Thanksgiving offering. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for this time of year, for the Thanksgiving season. It's a reminder of the blessings that we have um, given each day. And thank you for the opportunity to give back above and beyond. And um, just thank you for each person that will be receiving a part of this offering. God, just bless them, bless their ministry, use them, use these monies for uh, your glory, and may you be glorified and and blessed through this. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning and welcome and happy Thanksgiving. And we do indeed have much to be thankful for. One of the things that stuck out to me as uh, the service was going this morning was that no matter what season of life we're in, we can always be thankful for the cross. Uh, Life is full of a variety of seasons, uh, but God has reached down into, into that well, and he has Through the cross, he's offered us a way out, and that is something to celebrate and something to to always be thankful for. And so how do we respond to God's love and grace? Um, One way that we can is by giving to others, and that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, And I think this congregation can be commended for its generosity in giving to missions, giving to others in need. And one of the ways that we can respond to others is by loving other people and uh, Giving is certainly one way that we can demonstrate love uh, for other people. Uh, but yesterday, uh, Jay and Rosemary and myself were at a conference in New York City called Heart for Muslims. And through that conference, I was reminded that we are invited to love Muslims, that Jesus loves Muslims, and we also are invited to, to love Muslims. And so at this point, I would like to just show a three-and-a-half-minute video that is a reminder of God's invitation uh, for us to love all people, uh, and that includes uh, Muslims as well. So. We have been able to pull 450 different uh, men and women from different backgrounds and ethnicities and denominations to come together on one single, one unified uh, purpose, and that is we really want to promote love for Muslims and eliminate the fear of Islam. It is very important for Christians to be educated and reaching Muslims. There are so many false ideas and, and wrong ideas where the Muslims are concerned and there's too much negativity and we've got to reach out to them and love them and let them know Christ's love through us. Even if you're not a Christian, I think the education portion of this conference is, uh, is very important because you go beyond the stereotypes uh, that you hear in the media. Before I used to think of Muslims just as a people, as a part of this religious group. Uh, but it's really important to move past that and, and see Muslims just as people, as moms and dads with their kids, they're trying to get through college, etc. 
and more education and living with Muslims has been a transformative experience. Such a big community of Muslims that are hungry, they, they want to know the truth, uh, especially in the age of the internet. It's a, it's a really exciting time to be a Christian, you know, in this day and age. So I think um, that really like spurred me to, you know, um, reach out to Muslims, speak to them and, you know, just see them for who they are. I'd say that this conference really allows you to get a different perspective of what social media or even the regular media tells you about what Islam is. And it really shows that there are people that are in need of the gospel but are also in need of friendship and love and, and just simplicity. Sometimes we don't know how to culturally, we can help them to relate to our, our culture. There's a lot of barriers there, linguistic barriers there, there are cultural issues, there are religious perspectives, there are differences in, 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 in all, all around. In that area, once we come here in this conference that give us a picture about what to do next. So there's been a lot of Christians in my experience uh, that react to Islam out of fear or even uh, based solely politically. Uh, but as a follower of Jesus, I think my number one uh, loyalty is to love the people that God has brought into my life and into my circle. So I want people to be transformed deeply to love Muslims because of who Jesus is. In post 9-11 world, we know that the New York City has changed dramatically. This political climate, both the Republican and Democrats, when they're talking about Muslims and they have their view of Islam, it's the job of the church to stand up and say, we love Muslims. Not because of any political agenda, but simply what Christ preached, what Christ taught us. And that is we must love those that He loves. And He loves each and every one of us, regardless of our gender, race, or ethnicity, or religious affiliation. Jesus is above all those things. And I think that's a great message to share with uh, Muslims and also non-Muslims. So yeah, and at this time I'd invite Jay and Rosemary to share any feedback or thoughts they had from uh, their experience yesterday. Yes, this is uh, Jay and... Um, yeah, we did have a good trip down yesterday. Fortunately, we got back before the rain turned to snow, so, um, so it was a good trip. And um, kind of as we got there, and I don't know, those of you who have been in New York City, um, you, know, you walk down the streets in New York City, you see people of um, <laughs> all sorts of different things. And, uh, and then we come to the small Baptist church, you open the doors and go inside, and it's a, it's a completely different atmosphere inside the church. And it was really impressive um, how that atmosphere was but um, just a few things that kind of stuck out to me um, kind of the keynote speaker of the of the day was uh, Nick Ripken uh, Nick and his wife Ruth have been missionaries for I think 35 years and they have been in some of the very um, persecuted areas of, of the world where were uh, Muslims uh, basically Muslims but also other um, ethnic groups have been and um, one couple of things that he said that stuck out to me was he said when he first started going to these areas he thought he had to do all the talking and he said all he had to do was sit and listen and they would just tell their stories and um, I think many times like the like they said in the video there um, the love is kind of the key um, you know, they're, they're wanting love. Many times these Muslims are oscillated from their families. And then when they become Christians, we sometimes put them in a box as well. And um, so they're, again, you know, kind of isolated um, because of their background and, and those type of things. So it kind of stuck out to me. Another thing that they said, um, you know, how our, light, our life is supposed to be a light in a dark world. And they said, you know, a light in light don't make much light <laughs> you know it has to be you have to be among the dark of the world to uh to really stand out um so yeah that's that stuck out to me and, and he gave many many illustrations he he's written quite a number of books on his uh on his experiences and um and the one that kind of stuck out to me he was talking about this man i'm not sure what country it was in but um 
he was in prison because of his faith. And he was in prison for like 17 years. And every morning when he would get up, he would face the east and he would raise his hands and he would sing, you know, praises to the Lord. And guys made fun of him. They threw stuff at him. And, you know, he was, uh, he was made, made an obstacle in the prison. And um, after a number of years, um, they, they tried to stage that his wife, um, they, they, somebody else they brought in, tried to stage that it was his wife that they, they were going to torture and the lady ended up dying. And he, at that point, um, recant, wanted to recant his faith and uh, he had to sign some papers or something and he went to, to bed that night and prayed. And at the same time he was praying, his um, wife and kids who were fine, they felt the urge to pray as well and they prayed and he had a vision of um, seeing his wife and children. And uh, so he, in the next morning, he said, I, I don't want to do that anymore. I, I'm still, I still want to claim I'm a Christian. And um, so it went on, and a number of other things happened, and they were going to take him out to shoot him um, at the, where, they, where they do that. And uh, as he walked out the door, um, all the prisoners raised their hand, had said, Sogs. Um, it just was very touching how um, his life, I mean, those people, no matter where they're at, whether they're in prison or they're wherever they're at, they, uh, they praise the Lord and they, they witness to the prison guards, whoever. And it really, really was uh, a challenge to see how strong these people's faith really, uh, really are. I'll, this is Rosemary, and I'll just say, they didn't shoot him. The guard said... Uh, who are you that all the prisoners are standing in attention uh, when you're about to be shot? And so they released him. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, the other part that was really interesting, that we, they had several panels that, you know, we could ask questions or how can, you know, how can we be witnesses? How can we reach out to Muslims and other people, you know, or people around us. And uh, there were two ladies that came from Iraq, Lebanon, Lebanon and Egypt. And um, they were Shiite and Hutterite. And in, in the natural, those two are enemies, as we know from the news. And now they're both Christians, and they were sitting on this stage, and they uh, work with each other. So to me, that was a really interesting, uh, you know, that here's the witness that Jesus uh, crosses all barriers. And um, what impressed me with what they had to say was that... Uh, Basically, what we've been saying is that the, our love for other people and, you know, just sit down and listen to them. Have a cup of tea if you're a lady. You know, men can do th different things. But as ladies, we have influence in ladies' lives, which can also influence the children. So uh, that was a, a really important thing to me. So yes, I appreciate going yesterday as well, and it challenged me uh, for two things. In prayer, as that um, wife of the man that was about to be shot, you know, the Holy Spirit spoke to her about when to pray. And, and then number two, as a woman, we can reach out to uh, others, and we're not only affecting a woman's life, but a child's life. I mean, it's the same for men, too, but as a woman, that spoke to me. So, thank you very much. Yeah, well, some of those same stories stuck out to me as well, and uh, as the Rosemary was talking about the one story, too, one of the ways that she connected with other <clears throat> Muslim women was uh, many of them can't find uh, modest clothing, so she makes modern or modest clothing and was able to uh, show them and teach them how to sew then too and so that they can make some uh, modest clothing as well So yeah, God has opened some doors for us too in the past with connecting with people in State College and um, 
think some doors still are open, and so continue to, to pray for that. And we did see Andre's friends who was uh, here uh, a couple years ago and who took some of us to the mosque and State College, and he was a presenter along with uh, a number of, of other people uh, from the EMM Muslim uh, Christian Relations team, and uh, it was a powerful time, and it was also cool to be in Manhattan and to be praising God in African-style music, and uh, other people are doing whatever they're doing outside, uh, but anyway, uh, Lord willing, we'll go next year again, and so I invite you to consider that, and uh, if you're or interested, they do have a Facebook page, and some of the sessions are on their Facebook page, it's uh, the Heart for Muslims is the, the name of the conference, and 400 some people there from 19 different states so we weren't the farthest ones to travel yeah, but uh, continue to pray for all people God puts in our lives and people that sometimes we might think of as as enemies and uh, may we be love other people with the same kind of radical love that God uh, loves us so as we transition now to uh, uh, there's a couple announcements and uh, before we get to the announcements, there's the one scripture here, the November scripture of the month, and we can use our mouths to praise God, to thank him for many things, and also sometimes to say things that we shouldn't say, but reckless words pierce like a sword, and I invite you to go ahead and read this scripture with me. Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing, and so we can praise God today for his many blessings and also... Uh, by his grace, bless other people with our words as well. So there are a number of announcements in the bulletin, and 